Uh, you were not going crazy, Abigail. I was talking with my mute on. Uh, I was helping my daughter with something, so I had hit mute and forgot to unmute. So we are going to be talking about ratios. Hopefully everyone has done lesson one um, because lesson one um, kind of went over what is the language of ratios. And we'll touch on that as we go through this. So if you happen to miss it, go back after this lesson and do it. But I'll try to catch you up. So our learning target for today. So what I mean by learning target is what is the goal of this lesson? What do you need to know by the end of today? And that is that you can, give me one second. Chloe, I need you to bring your voice down. I'm in a meeting. So our goal for today is that you can include labels and draw a di diagram when representing a ratio. So we're going to be focusing on how to draw those diagrams and what they mean. Because uh, that meaning of the diagram is very important. So by the end of today, I hope that you can draw your diagram. Uh, today I'm trying to present from my iPad. And uh, so if I'm able to draw on it. So what I want you to do is a quick warm up. Try to find each of these mentally. So in your head, without writing it out, can you do 24 divided by 4? If you can, please write your answer in the chat box. Six, six. Great job. Zoe and Leo said six. 24 divided by four is six. I have always struggled with memorizing my multiplication tables. And next week, we're going to start something that's uh, called kicking it um, with our multiplication tables. And I'm excited about it, where you can earn your different color belts, kind of like if we're talking about uh, Taekwondo or karate, where you can earn up to a black belt in multiplication. So, it's a good skill to have, and um, I do better with twos. I can divide everything in half. I'm really good at that. So what I do whenever I see a four is 24 and half is 12, and then half of 12 is six. That's how I do things in my head. Everyone does it differently. So what is one fourth times 24? So whenever you see that one fourth times a number, you're thinking a quarter of a number. Well, guess what? That's the same as dividing it by four. It is still six. And then we have 24 times one fourth and it's the same. Uh, here, I'll see if I can invite you in. Trying to get uh, uh, Kaylee in here. So, Leah, I see you got 64. So, whenever you're multiplying by a fraction, what you're going to do is uh, actually divide by the smaller number if it's a 1. And we're going to learn more about that as we get into our year. We're going to be doing a lot with fractions. Trying to get Laura in here. She's having some technical difficulties.
apologize. So 24 divided by 4 is 6. 1 fourth divided by 24. So if we had 24 things, we would divide it like 1 fourth or a quarter of it would be 6. Same for here. Then 5 divided by 4. Anyone know what 5 divided by 4 is? Yes? I didn't hear you, sorry. One point two five, correct. As a fraction, it would actually be five fourths, which would turn into one and one quarter. Okay, so we're talking about ratios. Here is a collection of snap cubes. So we have our collection of snap cubes. We've all probably used snap cubes at some point, um, but we're gonna pick two colors uh, and we're gonna draw our diagram that shows the number of snap cubes for each of these two colors. So I'm going to pick our red and our green. So first thing I need to do is pick my two colors. I've picked them. Now I need to draw a diagram. A diagram does not have to be super fancy. You don't need to draw a whole table. So a diagram is simply, let's count how many red we have. We have one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. It's really important when you're drawing diagrams that you try to keep it organized. So we have five and then I have two green. One, two. And I'm going to do green and green. So when I'm looking at this, what I can see is how many red I have to how many green. And this is our ratio. We have one, two, three, four, five red to two green. And there's our five red to green. So obviously we can't trade papers, but I do want you to write down on your paper, write a sentence to describe the ratio. So think back to that lesson one, That's those sentences we had to write in that cool down. Write a sentence for this five, two, two, or you could also pick a different color combination. The pencil should be moving on your paper. Would anybody like to sh uh, read out their sentence or type their sentence in the chat box? Raise your hand if you want to read it out. So when I'm talking about that sentence, I would start it off with, um, there are um, like five red cubes for every uh, two cubes. Like that would be a sentence. You could also write it for every two green snap cubes, there are five uh, red cubes. You can't see anything, Zoe? You can't see my um, page here where I'm drawing on my PowerPoint. Okay. There are five red cubes.
for every two green cubes. So when you're asked to write a sentence, that's what you would do. All right, let's go to our next one. So, let's make this a little bit bigger. Elena mixes two cups of white paint with six tablespoons of blue paint. Here's the diagram for that represents this situation. So here's our diagram right here, right? When you're making a diagram, it's important to pull out the information you need, the two cups of white paint and the six tablespoons of blue paint. And you notice we have cups and tablespoons. When you're talking about ratios, you do not have to have the same unit. So it doesn't have to be where we're talking about two cups of white paint to two, six cups of blue paint. It can be different units. Units can be different when we're talking about our ratios. So we're going to talk about each of these statements. Um, we're going to circle those that are correct and describe the, that correctly describe the situation. Make sure that, you know, we're not doing partners, but that working together that we agree with what we're doing. You cannot hear me. I'll try turning up your volume, but you can't hear me. Can everyone else hear me? I'm not on mute. Okay. Okay. All right, so the first statement, the ratio of cups of white paint to tablespoons of blue paint. So we have our cups of white paint to tablespoons of blue paint. That's what we're comparing. Our cups to our tablespoons. So it says um, white paint is two and tablespoons is six. Is that correct? Do you agree? Type in the chat box. Yeah, I see some yeses. It is correct, the ratio of cups of white paint to tablespoons of blue paint is two to six because we have one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, now let's look at B. For every cup of white paint, there are two tablespoons of blue paint. So for one cup of white paint, when you see every cup, that would be the same as one cup. There are two tablespoons of blue paint. Do you agree or disagree? Type in the chat box. Um, so it should be like up in either the right corner or in the bottom. It should look like a little messenger symbol. Um, but if you can't figure it out, you can just come off and tell me if you agree or disagree. So for B, do we agree or disagree? Yes or no? So I'm going to look at, we have our one cup here, and I'm going to kind of divide this in half. So we have one cup and one cup up here in our table. Then look at how many tablespoons for each one cup of paint. So do you think... It's one cup of paint for two tablespoons? Or do you think there is a error? No. Zoe says no. I agree with Zoe. This two should be a three. Now we're going to come to C. There is one cup of white paint for every three tablespoons of blue paint. All right, well, that's, guess what? That's what we just corrected it to. So this is true. So you can see we have one cup 
for three tablespoons when you split it. So ratios, we can talk about them in you know, different uh, forms. We can reduce the number or increase the number. So now we have, there are three tablespoons of blue paint, three tablespoons of blue paint for every cup of white paint. That's number one, every one cup of white paint. So is D true or false? Do you agree? Three tablespoons of blue paint for one cup of white paint. Kylie says yes, true. I agree. It is true. True. Yep. Good job, Malachi. Now we have each tablespoon of blue paint. There are three cups of white paint. Is that true? For each or one tablespoon of blue paint, there's three cups of white paint. And that's false, correct. What do you think would happen to our paint if that was true? If we had, uh, if, if we did have um, three cups of white paint for one tablespoon of blue paint, do you think it would be a lighter color or a darker color? Correct. It would be lighter because there's there would be more of the white color, so it would get lighter. That's correct. All right, and then F. For every six tablespoons of blue paint, there are two cups of white paint. Is that true or false? Six tablespoons of blue paint, two cups. True. And then our last one, the ratio of tablespoons of blue paint to cup of white paint is six to two. True or false? So our ratio of tablespoons is six and cups is two. That is true. All right, good job, y'all. All right, so try this on your paper. Uh, Jada mixed eight cups of flour with two pints of water to make paste for an art project. So first, draw a diagram that rep represents this situation. And then B, write at least two sentences describing the ratio of flour and water. So go ahead on your paper. Your pencil should be moving. Khalil, are you writing down your notes? So we're doing our eight cups of flour and our two pints of water. That's going to be the diagram that we're drawing. Flour, I might use an F. I know I need eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have my eight cups of flour. Then I have two pints of water. Now, I know that there's two of them, and I'm, I want to kind of make it look like I'm dividing them out. So I'm going to put one pint of water here and one pint of water there. And now, I want you to think about why would I do that? Like, what kind of visual does that give us by kind of spacing them out a little bit? For me, when I draw a diagram that way, it helps me see where I could divide it in half. So you want to evenly distribute or divide up everything on your diagram so that it kind of matches. So now we're going to write our two sentences. 
And when we're talking about sentences, those are the things that, that we were just doing over here that we we're saying if they were true or false. Those are sentences. Or we're saying like the ratio of cups to tablespoons or for every cup there is this many tablespoons. So using that over here, we're going to write two sentences. So I might write... The ratio of cups of flour to pints of water is cups of flour, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and water is one, two. I could have also said it is four cups of flour to one cup of water. That would also be a true statement. So I suggest like practicing learning like ways to write the sentences. So for me, like I would always uh, try to memorize, I need to start something off with the ratio of blank of blank, you know, is, you know, kind of help me get started. Then you could also do um, a sentence like this, where there is you know, one cup of white paint for every three tablespoons. So that would be, I'm actually going to change my color. There is eight cups of flour for every two pints of water. Those are two examples that we can use for our sentences. All right, so we don't have the actual cards for sorting on here. Ah. So we're going to take a turn. Uh, why aren't they showing up? Sorry, my PowerPoint is not wanting to. So we're going to talk about um, a recipe. So if you've ever helped um, your grown ups cook, you can follow a recipe. But sometimes, so like my daughter likes to make cake, and sometimes when we are making cake, all right, hold on, my internet's lagging for a minute. Okay, there we go. Sometimes when we are making cake, we might want to make two batches if we're like to having a birthday party, and we need to double it or triple it depending on how much we're making. Um, or if we're making something for a like family dinner and I'm bringing over like something for you know, Thanksgiving or another holiday that we're celebrating, yeah, I might need to make the recipe larger. And so you have to keep the ratios the same. If I'm making a cake, I can't add like too many eggs or not enough eggs or it's not going to turn out right. So that's where you can see ratios in real life. So we're going to talk about spaghetti sauce. And we're going to talk about these three ingredients. So in our recipe for spaghetti sauce, we're going to talk about, we're going to have circles that represent our tomato sauce. So we have two cups of tomato sauce. And for every two cups of tomato sauce, we have four tablespoons of oil. And our triangles are going to represent our oregano. For every two cups of tomato sauce and every four cups of or to four tablespoons of oil, we actually need three. Actually, we're going to do six. Six. six teaspoons of oregano. So 
So looking at this, I want you to think about what are the ratios? So if I needed to cut this in half, so I didn't make I didn't need to make as big of a batch of um, spaghetti. What could I do? What would the ratio be? Then think about you know if I needed to make more. So we're going to write two sentences. So, uh, the cards didn't. I had digital cards that were supposed to pop up on here, but they're not popping up today. So if we were gonna write sentences for this, I would say our tomato sauce. Uh, uh, Might say for every two cups of tomato sauce, uh, we need four tablespoons. Of oil. So now I want you to come up with a different sentence. You can still start it with for every. Um, and I want you to type it in the chat box. I'll give you guys about a minute or so. So using this diagram right up here. Come up with a sentence and type it in the chat box. And just as a way to remember, you can cut things in half. And if it's too much for you to type, you can also come off mute and read it. So I might start another sentence out with Yep, good job. For every cup of tomato sauce, you need two tablespoons of oil and two tablespoons of, I think you maybe meant uh, three tablespoons of oregano. For every one cup of sauce, you need two tablespoons of oil. And that would have been, you know, correct too. You could also write, uh, let me erase, come back up here. The ratio of oil to oregano is blank to blank. So type in what is the ratio? What to what? For oil to oregano, what are the numbers? So we have four for oil and six oregano. That's correct. You could have also 
done what? What's another ratio that would work for that statement? So we have four to six. What's a different ratio that works for oil to oregano? Two to four. Good job. Uh, it's not two to four. It's actually two to three. But you're getting the point. So we've cut these in half. So four becomes two. Six becomes three. Two to three. And you can see that over here. If we cut these in half. And in my diagram, remember I said organize your diagram well? I didn't do a good job organizing my diagram over here for that last row. And that's why it looks kind of funky. Good job. I think you guys are starting to get it. All right. So what are the good things that we need to remember when you draw a diagram of a ratio? Oh, good job, Zoe. I like seeing your picture. So some of the things that we need to remember when we draw a diagram is think about the mistake I made right over here, right? I didn't organize it very well. So that's one of the things you need to remember. I'm going to change my color. You want to make it neat. You want to organize it. You want to make sure you use a symbol or a letter so you know what everything is represents. Represent the category. And then how can a diagram help you make sense of a situation involving a ratio? Well, when it's drawn neatly, you can see it visually. It helps you organize it. I always use symbols. Keep it organized. All right, so we are pretty much done. What you're going to do now is you're going to work on the practice problems. What time is it? Um, and remember, you can do the practice problems as many times as you need to, and then you're going to do this uh, cool down. There are two parts to our cool down. So we're going to be talking about cats in a room um, and each cat we're talking about ears, paws, and tail. And you're going to be creating, uh, the, writing out those ratios in our cool down. We're learning about ratios and how to make ratios. So I'm going to show us here in our practice problems.